In the 19th century, there was virtually nothing known about how characters or traits are passed from one generation to the next. Mendel was really the discoverer of the process that we now know as genetics. So I've been practicing genetics really for 30 years, but what is most beautiful about the story of Mendel is how he went about making those discoveries. Gregor Mendel went to university to study mathematics. He then joined an abbey and began to become very interested in the question of how traits get passed from one generation to the next. Mendel's original idea was to use mice, but he was forbidden to do this by the abbot who felt that it was inappropriate for a monk to be studying what appeared to be sexual behavior between animals. Mendel then turned around and studied the sex life of peas. They had what we now realize are purebred strains, strains where um, no matter how many times you breed that strain to itself, you get the same plant back. And for Mendel, this was incredibly important. But the second reason is that pea plants are self-fertilizing. The pollen, which is the equivalent of the sperm, and the ovule, which is the equivalent of the egg, are basically contained within the head of the flower. And so the only way you get the pollen inside is it's either self-fertilized or artificially fertilized by the scientists like Mendel. But it was critically important to his being able to know with every single plant who the original parents were of the cross. I think Mendel really was a genius. He laid out the scientific method in such a methodical and rigorous way that I don't think had ever been done before, particularly in this field. Um, that, was, that was true genius. And then the other was his ability to interpret his results. Um, I don't think it was obvious, and yet he got it exactly right. And we wouldn't change a thing in his paper even today. Now this was the days before the internet and days before social media and Twitter. You know, had Twitter existed in the 19th century, everyone would have known about Mendel's experiments within a day. Um, but instead, uh, it was published and promptly forgotten. So he was only rediscovered essentially as the giant that he clearly is um, well after his death. In reading his paper, what I came to appreciate is that all of the rules that I have learned in the 20th century about how to go about designing a good experiment, how to conduct the experiment, how to interpret the results, and then how to write them really clearly so audiences can appreciate what uh, I've done, were all on display um, by Gregor Mendel uh, in the 19th century. Um, it, is, it is perhaps one of the finest examples I know of, of a perfect experiment. <laughs>